Hi, Shep. Well, there's an uneasy calm which has fallen over this country. Children were back at school in Golan Heights today, but waiting to see what might happen tonight. But make no mistake, this was a major event. As you say, this was the first time Iran had directly attacked Israel from across the border in Syria, and it was the largest air operation carried out by Israel since the 1973 Yom Kippur War. What people are saying here is that this was a clear sign to Iran that they cannot encroach on the borders of Israel anymore. And we've seen that happen over the last few years. They have moved some of their troops and set up some sort of bases in Syria. Last night, we saw them react to that, and we saw Israel react in a very big way. Israel have also been saying for some time that they expected an Iranian attack. And actually, the last few days, we've seen Israel move some people up to the Golan Heights. We've seen more Iron Dome forces up there. And that's because these cross-border raids by Israel have... Uh, supposedly been going on for some time, taking out, picking out Iranian targets there. So this was the escalation, and Iran sending a clear message that it won't do anything by half measure. And in fact, just earlier today, the defense minister said, if it rains in our country, it will pour in yours. And many people saying that's exactly what we saw last night. 50 targets hit by Israeli jets, taking out all of the Syrian military, Iranian military emplacements in Syria. So a very significant evening last night here. Shep? What are we learning about the reports of the rockets which precipitated that? The reports that, that the Iranians fired into Israeli territory? Well, that is how this started off. Just after midnight over here, reports of around 20 rockets fired by Iranians. What's also interesting here is the Syrian connection. Very quickly, the Syrian government tried to distance itself from this move. And although those rockets were fired from inside Syrian territory, the Syrian government has said it had no part to play. And that's because Benjamin Netanyahu has always said, if Syria is seen to be helping the Iranians and taking a part in this, helping them set up bases and launch attacks, we will get involved in the Syrian conflict. And of course, nobody wants the balance of power changing over there, not least Iran, not least Russia. And it was very interesting yesterday to see Benjamin Netanyahu meeting with President Putin in Moscow. Moscow, and it was widely thought that he was going to ask President Putin to try and rein in his allies in Syria, i.e. the Iranians, and persuade them not to launch attacks like this. The fact that they went ahead and did it anyway does ask the question, how much influence does Russia have over the Iranians anymore? There are reports that this was carried out by Qasem Soleimani, the infamous head of the Al-Quds force, uh, and whether he was operating with consent from Iran, the, the hierarchy of Iran, we just don't know. So a lot of moving p uh, pieces over here. Remember, this is a geopolitical cauldron at the moment, a real mess. But things have calmed down at the moment. But tonight is the big question. Does Iran respond for that massive military strike against their facilities in Syria?